Welcome to the Flip Your Life Podcast, the go-to podcast to flip your life and financial future through real estate. Again, my name is Riley Pilgrim, and once again here with Vaughn. What's up? What's up? What's up? And today, we are going to be talking about real estate market trends and their impact on investment. We're definitely in a season where the real estate market is is really kind of giving people a run for the money on, on what's happening next. Everyone everyone wants to know and have the crystal ball of where yeah. are things going, what's going to happen. Um, obviously, no one has that crystal ball, but we're going to try to touch on some insights from someone in the game, working in, in the industry, constantly doing deals. And so, um, yeah, that's what we're, we're here for today. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm excited to be on again today. Um, love talking about the market. Love talking about what people are thinking, um, what we call consumer sentiment, right? Mm -hmm. There's actually reports out there about consumer sentiment and how people feel. Um, one of the biggest things is not only are we in, you know, a um, unknown market, right? Or not really confident market, but we're also in an election year. Sure. Which, right. goodness gracious, that's chaos. Yeah. And every time, like, <laughs> people just sit on the sidelines, right? And wait, I don't know what's, you know, let's see who gets elected into office. I'll make my decision there. But mm. it very rarely changes somebody's decision. That's true. Right. I That's think a lot of people true. like to use that as an excuse to just sit on the sidelines, just sit on the sidelines. Fear to do deals. Right? And but when you sit on the sidelines and you don't make decisions uh, quickly, then you're actually losing money. Sure. Especially in the investing world. So with that point, let me ask you this. Where do you feel like the real estate market currently stands today? This is, what is today? May 20 something. Yeah. I don't know what the date 24th, is. 24th, 2024. Yeah. So for me, I'm very optimistic. Okay. Right. So I'm not a doom and gloom guy. Um, I see opportunity in every market, right? It's just all depends on what you're doing and if you know how to pivot and if mm -hmm. you can pivot quickly. Right. So whether you're investing or, you know, investing in a stock market or anything like that or any type of investing or you're in real estate, depending on what your exit strategy is, you have to be willing to pivot. Mm. So I think in any market you can be successful and make a lot of money. Um, but when it comes down to it, with our purpose being what it is, that purpose of providing that pathway to home ownership, people are always going to need to be homeowners. Yeah. Right. They're always going to want to own rather than rent. So I feel whether we're in a down market, a up market, a booming market or a slow market, like we can be successful. Yeah. Right? It's a just a matter point. of what is our strategy right now? Like we know that if our product can be a property that we can sell for 250 or less, inventory is extremely low for that right now. Okay. Right? And maybe five years from now, it has to be $300,000 or less. Sure. Five years ago, it was $200,000 like, yeah, or okay. less, right? So as long as we're able to make those little pivots, um, we can always be successful. And I think in real estate, you, I mean, people always need a place to live. Yep. So as long as, you're, as long as you're willing to be smart, listen to the data, right? The numbers, the numbers don't lie. And then make those tweaks and pivots. You can be successful. Yeah, man. Uh, that's a good point is no matter how digital our, mm -hmm. our world goes, um, we as human beings are not digital. Yep. And human beings will always need to place their bodies somewhere to eat, sleep, shower, spend time with their families and, and whatnot. So yep. um, you're right. They're always, no matter what happens, there's going to be a demand, even in an apocalypse, people are going to need to be somewhere. Absolutely. So, um, but kind of, you kind of segued a little bit into my next question. I was going to ask, what are some of the trends or strategies that you think other investors need to keep an eye out on right now? Yeah. So if we look at as the market changes, right, and you have a shift in the economy, a shift in the market, shift in the real estate market, you got to look at historically what parts of the market don't really change much. Right. So as an investor and let's think of flipper, mm -hmm. right? Flipper, when, when you see a slow real estate market, a slow economy, the really the biggest change on the, in the real estate market as far as sales occurs between the 300 and around the five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar range, mm. right? Anything under that three hundred thousand dollar range still moves. Sure, right? inventory is still low because that's first time home buyer. That's affordable, you know, living. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything over that six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar range typically moves because these people are wealthy, and it doesn't really matter what interest rates are. A lot of times they're buying in cash, but maybe a, a couple, you know, basis points. Uh, of interest doesn't really affect them too much. Sure. So maybe somebody that was focused on flipping in that three hundred to seven hundred thousand dollar range now needs to think twice about which properties they're acquiring to mm -hmm. flip. 
So once again, it goes back to being able to pivot. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, well, with pivoting and with all the stuff we're talking about, are there any ways that you would say that Aria Junkies right now is either making changes or pivoting on the fly with the yeah. market? Anything that you're doing um, in that regard? Uh, well, maybe not from the market um, because you know we've kind of known that over the last five years when I got into real estate investing, um, one of my mentors told me that the owner finance game does really well in a booming economy and a booming real estate market. But he said, you know what? When that economy starts to slow down and the real estate market starts to slow down, owner financing does even better. Interesting. Right? Okay. Because it's directly tied to interest rates and rent prices. Mm. What goes up when interest rates goes up? Prices or rent? Rent goes up when interest rates go up. Okay. Right? Yeah. So the person that's paying $2,000 a month in rent will much rather pay $2,000 a month to own. Sure. Yeah. And if we can make that happen, which we often do, Right. It's not going to change where we were from a real estate market standpoint five years ago. Mm. Right. Yep. And so that- and then also when interest rates go up, banks start to tighten their criteria and less people get approved through the bank. Mm. OK. If they can't get approved through the bank for a traditional mortgage. Who are they going to come to? They're either going to have to rent or come to you. Yep. They got to do something that's non-traditional. Yep. Right. Which is what we specialize in. I hear you. OK. So we've been preparing for this for a little while. I see. And so you're getting ready to uh, be there in preparation for what's coming, you know, with, with a bit of a downturn, you guys have, what, what is the old saying that, that luck equals uh, preparation and opportunity, something like that? Yeah, um, Success is at the intersection of preparation and opportunity. There it is. Okay. Right. And it was something like that. Yep. Oh, yeah. So you guys are, you have the preparation and you're getting ready to meet the opportunity yeah. um, that's, that's going to be ripe. And not, not only that, but you're also gonna be able to more importantly, help people who can't get financing Exactly. because w- when credit markets tighten, when banks tighten up, things get harder, there's less money in the economy. Yep. You have a, a path, a pathway to home ownership yep. for people to be able to, to buy homes and not be stuck renting forever. Exactly. And that's what we're all about. When I got into this six years ago, it was all about, hey, yes, you can be successful. Real estate investing can be lucrative. You can make a lot of money. But what is the purpose behind it? Mm. What impact am I going to have on the world? Right. Yep. And I'm a believer. And, you know, God put me on this earth for a purpose. Yep. Right. So our purpose is to help people through real estate. We help people become homeowners that can't get through traditional means. Right. Yeah. So if we focus on that, I think we'll always be successful. It just so happens that we're in a market in a niche that even when the real estate market slows down and the economy slows down and interest rates go up things just kind of get better for us. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. Well, if if you're an investor listening, hopefully that, that kind of eases some of your fears and gives you a little bit of courage to maybe instead of pulling completely away from the market, thinking about ways that you can pivot, shift your business model a little bit and, and try to stay afloat during, during what seems to be a downturn. As you can see, there's, there's uh, niches and strategies that actually uh, prosper during the time where everyone else is, is calling it a downturn or a recession or whatever yeah. else the word may be. Um, and if you also, if you're, if you're watching and, and you know, you might think you want to be a part of this and, and participate in providing that pathway to homeownership, definitely yeah. reach out to Vaughn. Yeah. And there's definitely, you know, I know I, obviously I'm entrenched in the real estate investing community and I know a lot of flippers and wholesalers out there that are struggling right now. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of them that are out of the game that were in the game and doing pretty well a year or two years ago. Sure. So you have to be able to pivot. You have to have more than one exit strategy if you're investing, but I also know a lot of people that want to get involved in real estate investing have always been intrigued, but don't know how. One of the best ways to learn it is to put your toe in the water by becoming a lender or partnering with somebody that has a dialed in system, has it figured out, and then you can learn the market. And mm-hmm. I know a lot of very um, high income earners, high net worth individuals that they work 40, 50, 60 hours a week. They like real estate. And the best way for them to get involved is to lend on real estate and sure. partner with somebody like us. Yeah. They don't so. want to quit their job. They just want to exactly. lend the money in, in, the, in the asset class. So yeah. um, if, guys, if, if this has been enlightening to you, um, you know, encouraging to you, whatever the case may be, uh, please don't forget to give it a like. 
um, a subscribe if it's on YouTube, a thumbs up, whatever the platform you're listening on supports, please do that thing because Absolutely. as we all have heard a billion times, it helps the algorithm push the content. I think that wraps up the episode for today. We're, yeah. we're, we're trying yeah. to be short, punchy, and to the point so we don't waste your time and we don't waste ours. So Absolutely. Quality yeah. content. Quality content. That's right. Until the next episode, guys, peace. Peace.